Hey, and welcome back. Uh, so in the previous tutorial, I showed you how to uh, initialize the username into the Java code, uh, not the username, but the um, data here, the variables into the Java code here so they can start working with them. So let's now listen to the on click of the register button. And it's really simple. Listen to register button click. And then we want to sign up. Uh, okay, let's listen to it first. M register button dot set on click listener. So we just listen to set on click listener. When somebody click, when a user clicks on it, we create. We want to uh, create that. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the instance on click. We want to say, let's toast something. So I want to introduce you to now Toast. So if you don't know what Toast is, Toast is that notification that appears on your uh, on your device, Android device, um, mostly for a short period of time and then disappears. So so this is a Toast right here. As you can see, this one that says clicked is a Toast. So this one is something that always appears within a short period of time and disappears. So we're going to see how to create that right now. So to do that, we just simply say Toast dot make text and then the first context it takes three parameters the first contact the first parameter is con the context which we're going to say this or in this case i'm going to say register activity that this because the context if you just say this we're going to get an error because uh we are not let me actually show you that error that we're going to get because explaining it just like that wouldn't really be enough so let's say this and then and then I say success, like like hi or something. And then toast dot length long dot show. And as you can see, we have an error here that cannot resolve the method because that the context cannot be resolved since we're in in, in a class in an inner method here on click. So to be to be able to come back to the the, the, uh, the main context, we're just going to say register. We're going to call the class register activity dot this. And if I run the app, that little line, we run line of code, we should be able to see that. Oh, one thing I forgot to do is now uh, introduce you to something else called uh, launches. Uh, intent launches so it's in in the manifest so each activity whenever you create is uh, included in the manifest automatically uh, and Android knows which activity to bring to the front via the launcher so anytime I have this intent filter inside of an activity that will make it be the one that will be we always launch by default when a user opens the app so in this case we want to make the register activity our default launcher so let's just uh, you know what I can cut, cut this and copy but I might as well just you know change the username change the names here and it just brings the same effect you know by making the register doesn't make it being any different uh, but of course I'm going to change this but for the t test purposes I'm going to leave it like that for now so that we have the register activity with the intent launcher in it and when we do this, we will have the um, the home page, the the register activity show up now. All right, all right. So now let's click because we set the toast here. Uh, that when we click it, it should say hi. So let's click it, and it says hi. So that's pretty okay. That's pretty. I always like testing stuff like this, and I always like also using the. Uh, you should also try using um, the debugger. Uh, or the log log de log log cut debug so that you could get uh, really detailed information about what your app is doing and uh, how it's performing. In this case, we're just going to just uh, use toast. All right, so it's working pretty fine. Now we want when the user. So what do we want? Uh, what do we want to happen when this button is clicked? We want to be able that when the button is clicked, we want to be able to get the username, email, password, and then store it into our back end in parse.com. So how do we accomplish this? It's pretty simple. Parse offers a really, really detailed uh, instruction here about how to sign up users. So here it is how to sign up. The first thing, and it's just found by going to uh, 
pars.com documentation android and then users here at sign up you get this the first thing your app will do is probably ask the user to sign up so of course that's all apps so we need the users to sign up sign up so to do that this code is pretty handy Pars user we create a new user instance uh, and then it's going to create a user in Pars, which is going to look something like this and then set the username as the name of the person who's going to be, uh, to be entered, the password, set the email, and other information if you'd like, and then sign up in background, which is the commander like we spoke about earlier. So let's just copy this. And then come to our one to listen to when the app is clicked to store the user who clicked it into the background so let me just get rid of this extra code we can just save in background like that and i won't use need to use to put in the cell phone number but that little piece of code like that is just uh enough but really not enough it's going to leave us an error because as you can see we're just going to store a user called with an, a, a, my name uh, username and my pass password and this is the, going to be the email this is not the user that we're looking for to store this user we're going to have to get what they entered into the text boxes here and then convert them into strings and then store them here and then put them in parse make sense perfect so let's go ahead and do this so the first thing we want to do is here is uh, get the user name password and email and convert them to string and then the next thing is store user store user in parse or to parse whichever makes sense so I don't want to say list toast anything here now so get the username. To get the username, we're going to create a string, and we're going to call this username, and then we're going to say is equal to. So this username, added text right here, we're going to say em username dot get text. So we're getting the text from here, and then the username, and then dot to string. We're converting it into a string. So a string is a. Uh, how do you explain this? It's, it's kind of a character representation in, in, in code. All right. So, and then I like adding dot trim. So dot trim, whenever I add it to my username, password, and email, kind of get rid of extra spaces because sometimes users have spaces in their username. So yeah, kind of like, you know, those extra spaces shouldn't really be a worry. They should just be, uh, your app should be able to get rid of it. So trim is always important. And then we're going to copy this three times because you're going to need those three data. So username, uh, password, and then the password is m user password dot get text to string straightforward. And then here it's email, and m username is m user email dot get text to string and then dot to trim it and then now since we have it as strings we can now use the username password and email by saying set username by saying is the username set password is password set email is email okay and then saving background and then here we want to save it with a callback like to tell us that success successful sign up so sign up callback and then we I always like to say so it gives you a parse exception to it if there's any error and then so we want to say uh, if e equals to null then user signed up successfully else uh, 
there was an error signing up user advice user so the user signed up successfully so what do you want to do here when the user has signed up successfully we want to kind of welcome the user by with a toast message so we want to say toast that make text and then we're going to say register activity that this and then a string here uh, success welcome and then um, toast dot length long dot show so one thing I'm not really doing here is uh, one of the most recommended thing as far as strings is concerned uh, a string like this should be in a string uh, resource folder here so for localization and I not going to be doing it in this tutorial because I just want to show you how you can do it but I'll be giving you notes important notes about how to go about doing this uh, so make sure you check the notes section all right so success welcome the user and then now we want to take the user to the home page to view or post statuses right so we say now we I want to introduce you now something called intent now intent is what we will be talking about in the next video so in this case let me just actually so let me just right here take user home page after right so if it is successful welcome it, welcome the user and then take him to the home page so let's run this right now but we cannot take the user to the home page because you haven't used the intent and we're going to be looking at that in the next video so let's run this app right now and see if we have any user in the back end with the username that we're going to create. And there we have our app. So let's check our back end first of all, if there's any any data. And again, I hate this. I just want to get rid of this. Test object. Good, finally. All right, so now there's no users, right? So let's go ahead and create a uh, user. Let's sign up. So I'm going to say Ronnie, and then I'm going to say Ronnie Kibet one at gmail.com, and the password is uh, I'm going to say Ronnie. Let's sign up, and then success, welcome. And then if we refresh our back end, Look, we have a user, so great. And it's pretty straightforward. Username yeah, is Ronnie. Ronnie. Uh, email Ronnie Kibet one created at, updated at, and everything. Yeah, so, so in the next video, we're going to talk about intent that when the user successfully logged in, uh, we can take the user to the uh, homepage. Actually, before let me see if we have enough time. 14. So uh, I will do this in the next video. I will be showing you how to handle the errors that if the user tries to sign up again, like for example, right now, which of course parse wouldn't sign up the user because that's an error because the username and the email is already taken. So if I refresh, there's no user. It's just the same user that as before. But if I change this data, that's when I can be able to see a user. So if I change, if I put this back to Ronnie, Still, I wouldn't see any use. I wouldn't see any success notification. But if I change it to run or something else, I would see success. And if I refresh it, I have two users, Ron and Ronnie.